welcome back. We will have lecture 9 for the course uh, corrosion failures and analysis and we will continue our discussion on galvanic corrosion. So, the course is topic galvanic corrosion. Now, if we see that in case of galvanic corrosion, it is basically is defined as two metal corrosion and one example we have provided is iron and zinc S. And we have seen couple of observations, the observations were preferential cathode and anode and second observation was cathode also corrodes, but very very small corrosion rate and anode corrodes at a high rate. Right? And interestingly one more observation we can make out of it if we see that zinc and iron situation, the cathodic reaction is nothing but H 2 and anodic reaction was plus 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 of course its corrosion rate is very very small its corrosion rate is very very high but it doesn't stop now interestingly if we consider a situation like what we had in case of daniel cell that we have one end copper is dipped in copper sulphate and copper ion activity was maintained at 1 and another end we had zinc and zinc activity and it was dipped in zinc sulphate and activity of zinc ion was maintained at 1 and we develop some potential and that potential we measured by standard hydrogen electrode and here also we also maintain standard hydrogen electrode and then we measure the potential. Now, interestingly this potential if we maintain this condition it is coming out to be 0 0.34 volt and here it will be minus 0 0.76 volt. Now, this potential how it is coming from Nast equation. Considering this reaction And every time we are considering reduction potential, that is what we have written in terms of reduction. Fine. 
where the reaction was zinc. Interestingly, this would become if we connect them and remember there should be a Shawl bridge to maintain electrical connectivity and here we connect this with a conductor with a and then current will flow from this copper into zincate and this is positive or cathode and here it is negative or anode. Now, if you see cathodic and anodic reactions, so the same ion is depositing and same metal is forming the ion. In case of zinc surface, it is zinc which is going to the anodic situation when the it is connected. So, that means, preferentially anodic reaction would happen here and preferentially cathodic reaction would happen here. And interestingly here, since we are not having any other species other than copper plus plus, only this cathodic reaction can take place and only this anodic reaction can take place. This is corrosion and this is deposition. Since copper has a higher reduction potential that is what it actually reduction process is preferred here. Now, this case and this case is different. So, this is also galvanic corrosion, galvanic corrosion of zinc, but here we have ions of both the metals in the solution. But in this case, iron of iron is not present, iron of zinc, ions of zinc is also not present in the solution. Initially, to start with, it was only H plus, but still we ended up getting this reactions. So, that is another important aspect because these things are coming that the, because this value is, is this and this is nothing but which is standard reduction potential of zinc. But in practical cases, we experience the situation what we had in case of iron zinc. Ions of individual metals may not be present in the actual, actual situation or practical situation. So, that time we cannot judge that which type of reaction would happen from the reduction potential. For example, here we cannot judge from the iron reduction potential which is minus 0 0.44 the standard reduction potential for iron and zinc it was minus 0 0.76 volt standard reduction potential because those ions are not present in the solution. So, in this case it is very busy how to decide anodes and cathodes. For example, if we have two metals m 1 and another case m 2 and they are in their respective ions in, in connection with respective ions of that electrolyte where we have that respective ions. This is m 1 n plus and it is m 2 n plus both the ions are present in those electrolyte. So, I can decide which will act as cathode and which will act as anode if the such situation arises simply by looking at the Nost equation which is generalized form this is a generalized form we can use and we know that there is a series exist for example here if this value is greater than so then m1 would be anode m2 would be cathode okay and the reaction should be in this case And in this case, M2. So, these will be two reactions. 
that way we can judge. So, in so pure cases, so it can possible, it can be possible when it is a pure case, pure species. And here we can judge by looking at standard reduction potential series. And that series for example, if I try to point out here you will get like this a u a u 3 plus e 0 value would be 1.498 volt and this is all with respect to standard hydrogen electrode this is gold Two plus is basically like that way you can go up to magnesium so like that way we can have a series which is based on finding this value by putting the same ion of that particular metal maintaining that ion concentration to be activity to be 1. So, for example, here if this concentration is 1, this activity is 1, then of course, potential of that particular electrode would be same as reduction potential, standard reduction potential because this lone part would be 0, if the activity of metal ion concentration is 1. So, like that way we can find out these values and here if I try to see this if we connect it to this too when their ions are present then this would be cathode and this would be anode. Similarly, if I connect magnesium with nickel this should be cathode magnesium would be anode. Similarly, if I connect nickel with copper nickel would be anode copper would be cathode fine it is very easy to find out, but it is impossible to get in practical situations. So, that time we have to generate another series that is called galvanic series. Galvanic series and in that galvanic series we have to just find out that which one in a two metal contact those two metals could be alloy those could be metal two could be pure metal those could be pure metal and alloy all those combinations are possible even it could be same metal but the reactions would have different activity okay i'll come to that so galvanic series how and it starts with this particular discussion that cathodic reaction and anodic reaction if you see cathodic reaction is always this even if iron remains cathode 
why we say this because cathodic reaction wherever cathodic reaction happens it is basically cathode, but that does not mean that that particular metal will have a cathodic reaction. Here it is not happening rather that cathode is actually actually going through anodic reactions. So, that is what we need to have a kind of comparative series which will not get bound by the values what we have in standard reduction potential series. And these series could be different for different electrolyte. Let us say how we find that series. Okay. So, let us say we have a metal 1 m 1 and m 2 and another metal m 3. Let us say all are m 1 this m 1 and metal m 1 metal and m 2 metal they are dipped in let us say NaCl solution or sea water solution. This is m 1 this is m 2 and let us say this is aerated aerated solution and if we connect them this is a salt bridge S B S B is nothing but the salt bridge. Now, we have to just check which way current moves, if current moves from this end to this end. So, the current flows from this end to this end and we know that in galvanic connections current always moves from positive end to negative end. So, this will be cathode and this would be anode. So, this is anode and this would be cathode, since this is a galvanic mode of situation and here the corrosion is taking place. So, that case M 2 would corrode and M 1 would act as this is anode, M 1 would be the surface for cathode or cathodic reaction cathode. And interestingly when we have this NaCl there we did not have M n plus here also we did not have M 2 n plus. So, that way we can see that by looking at the current flow we can check which one is active which one is less active. So, the less active metal in this series in NaCl solution whatever 3.5 percent of sea water in this series M 1 would move on top of M 2 and here we are not putting any values. You can also find out the values here by joining standard hydrogen electrode you will get some potential, but we are not mentioning that we are just comparative we are making a comparative statements that we are actually which one is acting as a positive end which one is acting as a negative end. So, accordingly we decide which one is cathode and which one is anode. Similarly, if we have a joining like if a condition like the same condition instead of m 1 if we put m 1 and m 2 let us say when we join this like this same situation what we have here if the current moves from m 1 to m 2 in the external circuit then definitely m 2 is cathode and m 1 is anode. So, that means we can see that if we compare m 3, if we compare m 1 and m 3 definitely m 3 is less active and m 1 is more active. So, more active one dissolves and less active metal will act as cathode where cathodic reaction happens and here. So, that means m 3 would stay on top of m 1. So, now we have a series which is m 3, m 1 and m 2. So, if we join then m 2 and m 2 definitely this would be positive, this would be negative. Now, interestingly what are the cathodic and anodic reactions? Since I have said that this is aerated, so we have dissolved oxygen and if we consider an NaCl solution, it is a neutral solution. So, the cathodic reaction would be
an anodic reaction m 1 minus n e equal to m 1 n plus sorry it should be m 2 okay. even if it is m 1 no problem. In that case this is joined m 1 and m 3 because m 3 is acting like cathode and another canodic reaction would be m 2 minus 2 e equal to n e. So, let us let us make a generalized statement m n number of electrons are associated. So, it would be m 2 n plus that time m 1 and m 2. So, in this case this is positive this is negative in this case this is positive this is negative and that is what it is followed in that galvanic series. So, now in the galvanic series this m 1 m 2 and m 3 could be metals could be alloys and could be some reactions also okay fine now but if we consider only metals so we can have uh, a series like this in let's say uh, sea water and interestingly before I get to that particular thing. So, that means, you could see that if you change this NaCl solution, you can change it to some other solution, you might find that M 3 might become active compared to M 1. So, it is not sacrosanct that in one particular electrolyte, one metal or alloy is less active or noble does not mean that that will remain noble in other solution. Okay. So, in order to understand the industrial applicability of galvanic series, we have to see a complete galvanic series and see how we select materials in order to prevent corrosion related problems. And whenever we select materials, we try to select materials which are close by in the galvanic series in that particular environment. Okay. So, in order to understand that we will take this galvanic series discussion because it involves lot of engineering applicability in the next class because this particular class we are I think hardly left with 10 minutes. So, 10 minutes will not be sufficient to understand this galvanic series situation, but at least I could tell you that what is the implications of galvanic series and standard reduction potential series because in case of standard reduction potential series we always deal with same metal same species and unit activity is maintained, but in case of galvanic series it is not needed. So, for example, if we consider steel and stainless steel fine. So, let us say you have a stainless steel SS and 304 standard in the standard form of 188 austenitic stainless steel. austenitic stainless steel and in this case if we have another steel which is mild steel and you let us say you have made an electrical contact. So, you have one is mild steel another one is stainless steel and if this couple if you expose to normal portable water you would see that the S s would become cathode hardly any corrosion will be noticed there and but this will be highly corroded. Okay. Why this situation happens? Because if we compare the galvanic series in potable water S s would always stay on top of mild steel and their difference in potential if even if you measure the potential in the in the potable water this difference in potential is large and in fact when you connect them the large current will flow from S s to the mild steel from the through the conductor or to the external circuit and here the conductor is nothing but this and this is the electrolyte. So, here ions move and here electron moves. Okay. So, S s would become cathode and M s is be, M s becomes anode 
but here interestingly they are not pure metals they are they are highly the SS is highly alloyed met, uh, metal and MS is less alloyed metal fine. So, this is very important because this tells me that we cannot have such kind of situation where highly noble and highly active metals cannot be joined for an engineering applications. Okay. So, we have to be very careful that part that we have to select materials so that they are galvanic series in the galvanic series they are close by, but in this case they are wide apart. So, wide apart means it will be highly cathode and highly anode okay. and if it is they are close by the galvanic effect will be hardly noticed. Okay. So, we will talk this part in our next lecture. So, till then let us stop here we will continue our discussion on galvanic series galvanic series as well as galvanic corrosion because this I this galvanic corrosion I consider to be one of the fundamental corrosion forms. Thank you.